So, let's see how David and Ella have started their relationship. Good. And that this relationship's only going to work um, if there is, is a full input of God in the centre at all times. Well, early on in our relationship, we've always thought about us being three in the relationship, not good, only the good, two of good. us. Mm. So yes, we really would like as much as possible to have God's input and God's mm -hmm, guidance mm -hmm. in a relationship to prepare us for future for our future. Like the city on a hill, everything we do is a witness to something, including our marriage. A lot can depend on how we start. This column can be a wall that blocks everything, or a foundation that supports the building. We all want to avoid seeing our marriage go out of control, like this man on stage. <laughs> like that aircraft, a good takeoff can really help you to attain cruising speed quickly and smoothly. When I first met you, first of all, you were beautiful, you still are, but even after 30 years? Absolutely. But the thing is, is we were so different, I just couldn't see it coming together without God's help. No, it is not a sign of weakness that we needed God in our marriage. So you believe that God actually put us together? Definitely I do. And I did. Without God, many marriages work on the principle that the moment you don't get what you want, you just fly away, just like these birds. Well, I mean, it comes down to obedience really to what God says Come on. and he's, he's put those boundaries in there for a reason um, because he can see way ahead than we can see. If you have a starting point like you guys have, where of a you've decided that you want God in your relationship immediately, mm -hmm. you've got that extra help mm -hmm. that Sandra and I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we're coming really. from the point of view that we, through divorce, we lost everything. We oh, lost yeah, each other. We lost the children this, we yes, could have had. Sure. We lost our home. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> and treasure the other person. What's important to them, make it just as important to you. Even if you didn't get it right at the start of your marriage, it's not too late to allow Jesus to step in and help you with it. That means making him your teacher. Now, in order for that to work, you have to be the student and he's the boss. What are you waiting for? More of the same? Let Jesus in. Yeah, let him in. You won't be sorry you did. It's the best decision you will ever make as a couple and as an individual. This aircraft has a definite destination and is landing safely. The crucial person is the pilot. Make sure Jesus is the pilot in your marriage. This concludes the fifth point, which is the sovereignty of God in our marriage. Does that mean I'm not the boss? No, you're not the boss. Oh, no. But neither am I. Oh, well, that's good, too. I think God's got that one covered. Praise God. Are you sure? He might need my help. <laughs> no. Okay. Next month's message is going to be on the power of commitment in your marriage. God bless, and I hope to see you then.